Venus flytraps naturally live on the border of North and South Carolina in the southeast part of the United States. This is the only place in the world that they are naturally found. It's an area of about 20 square miles or about 40 square kilometers. Why aren't all plants carnivorous? And the answer is both simple and complicated. On the simple side, First off, really we can say that all plants really are carnivorous because all plants get minerals and nutrients through their roots and those minerals and nutrients are basically made up of dead animals that have rotted and decomposed in the soil and the plants are sucking those up. But the kinds of carnivorous plants that we see where the leaves have actually changed shape to make traps, this is very different. Uh, and this is an accident of evolution that probably happened about 50 million years ago. It actually happened about six times among the entire plant kingdom. And some plants, those plants growing in very nutrient poor conditions, evolved a particular mutation to allow them to capture insects and extract the minerals and nutrients directly from the insects. How do these plants catch insects? How do they move so fast without having muscles and nerves? The Venus flytrap is taking the energy that's stored in water, pumping it out very quickly to close the trap, and then repumping that water back in to reset the trap. It's at the hinge of the trap that cells fill with water, causing the closure of the lobes. These tiny hairs trigger the trap. When prey successfully touches two sensory hairs within 20 seconds, it activates the death trap that immediately closes. For the plant, the advantage is obvious. A small twig will not action the trap for nothing. Only the agitation of an insect is likely to trigger a second hair. The sensitivity of the hairs is so finely adjusted that the fall of raindrops will not trigger the trap. How does the plant manage to eat such large prey? Carnivorous plants are not only mouths, but also stomachs. They use these multiple red enzymes to reduce their prey to a pulp. The plant secretes enzymes, just like people have digestive enzymes in their stomachs that dissolve the insect. And then the plant just absorbs all the nutrients in the juices that were left from the dissolved insect. Carnivorous plants only digest the soft flesh of their prey. All that remains is the insect's exoskeleton. It takes a Venus flytrap about three to five days to completely digest an ant or a fly that it has caught. The Venus flytrap will only dine three or four times in its life before turning black and wilting. Most carnivorous plants live in swamps, happily obliging Aaron Ellison to use his homemade kayak to approach them. Sundews, or plants a lot like sundews, are probably the most primitive or ancient type of carnivorous plant. This sort of pattern of a sticky trap, then a more complicated trap having evolved, has occurred at least five or six times in all of the plant kingdom. Sundews are the primitive group followed next in their evolutionary sequence by the Asian pitcher plants and followed next in the evolutionary sequence by Venus flytraps. It may be primitive, but this glue trap is highly efficient. Each ball glows in the sun like a dewdrop and acts as a magnet to attract insects. It contains a powerful sticky glue any insect that lands is stuck with no chance of escape.
The efforts of this fly to escape its trap are in vain. Once immobilized, it will be dissolved by round enzymes along the stem. Pitcher plants are considered advanced as carnivorous plants go because they have a variety of methods that they use to both attract and trap and digest insects. The pitcher plant has these hairs that point downward so that when the insect tries to crawl back up, it gets caught in these hairs and falls further into the plant. The inside of the pitcher is coated with a very, very fine wax that allows the pitcher plants to act like a sliding board for the insects to slide down into the very bottom where they're captured and digested. The electron microscope reveals this amazing forest of hair, all pointing in the same direction, stopping any prey from climbing out. Other species have replaced hairs by small tiles in which insects' legs become trapped. Some hairs are even equipped with glue on their tip. Carnivorous plants have evolved to adapt according to varying sizes and types of prey. There are over 500 varieties of carnivorous plants that live in swamps, but some are not where you'd expect them to be. Faster than a Venus flytrap, more powerful than the best mouse trap. It's the bladder wart. And if you pull it up, it looks just like any other green limp algae that you would find in the pond anywhere. But put this under a microscope and a whole new world of plant life uh, will become visible. These carnivorous plants capture zooplankton using a bag-shaped trap equipped with a valve that closes at a speed of 10 to 15 milliseconds. But unlike above-surface carnivores, they do not have digestive glands. How do they digest living prey? Bladderworts have made a pact with smaller than them, tiny protozoas. It doesn't take long for an army of them to decompose the prey. The bladderwort enables the protozoa to feed on large prey that they would be unable to catch alone. And the protozoa break down essential digestive nutrients for the bladderwort. It's microscopic symbiosis. Once fed, the plant can now grow this magnificent flower. Plants use energy to build structures. Just like people invest money in businesses, plants invest carbon in structures. We expected that a complicated structure like a carnivorous plant trap, like the trap of a Venus flytrap, would take a lot of carbon to build. To our surprise, the results of our research showed that for a normal leaf, that takes about a gram and a half of carbon to make every gram of leaf. In contrast, these very elaborate, very complicated carnivorous traps that we had assumed, we had always assumed were very expensive to produce, turn out to be really cheap on about average 20 to 25 percent less expensive, less energetically costly to make than are the leaves of a normal plant. <laughs> Thank you.
If people were designing a Venus flytrap, they would come up with a system of pumps and pulleys and engines that would require a lot of fossil fuels to drive that, as opposed to thinking about how they could just simply take the energy stored in water, squeeze that energy out, and then reuse that energy again from the water to reset the trap. And so plants like Venus flytraps have a lot to teach us. <laughs>